Alf, why does it feel like parts of the sports card hobby are starting to look more and more like this? Frank, clip, clip. A variation on the three card Monty. It looks easy. You just have to choose where the ball ends up. But the game is rigged. Now the cups are moved around at real pace. And what seemed easy first time round becomes impossible. Surprise, surprise. I lose. Suddenly, the gang move, blocking our cameras. The woman who encouraged me to bet makes a signal. And it's game over. We've been rumbled. What's going on, sports card hobby family? It's another day, starting off another week with another sports card video. We're here for you. We're always here for you, no matter what. Well, I shouldn't say no matter what, because you never know. Before we dive into the sports card madness reaction to the CT scanning company coming on and talking up all the stuff, huge thanks to today's video sponsor, ComC.com. 35 million plus cards in the database. They've got a football card special going on right now. With the NFL season on the brink, we are so close to the NFL season, and I'm seeing that the Chiefs are just having a good time. They got their speedy new first rounder. Man, does it just feel like they're never going to lose another game. I'm trying to jinx them. I'm trying to throw a curse at them. No offense to all the Chiefs fans, but I'm just ready to see anybody but the Chiefs win it this year. Don't forget to outfit your best cards in style. Slab mags code SPORTSCARDDAD gets you 10% off your order. UV protection, so keep that surface looking fresh. And your autographs not fading. It's 10% off with the Sports Card Dad code. All right, Sports Card Madness, my buddies Nick and Larry, although this was just Nick. Nick interviewed a CT scanning company. It's been all the rage in the news here recently for obvious reasons. There were things that kind of struck me a little bit about this interview, but we'll talk about that. But for those that don't know what the heck we're talking about here, CT scanning, it looks like it's been a thing based on the interview for at least one year where possibly some of the largest breaker slash businesses in the sports card hobby may or may not have been utilizing this technology. Now, what are the obvious benefits for a CT scanning type technology in, in our hobby. I, I mean, I can think of the one that makes the most sense, and it's making sure that the stuff that is in that sealed box that you're ready to spend huge money on is actually the stuff that's in the box. When we think about Logan Paul's booster box craziness, where it was actually G.I. Joe cards instead of the first edition Pokemon cards, you take the card and put it in the sleeve. A clear example of how we can figure that out. My buddy Neo opened up, what was it, 1990 Marvel Universe cards, and it ended up being, I think, Dungeons and Dragons cards or something like this. This is going back a couple years. He got it off of Mercari, Mercury, Mercari, and it, I think it was an expensive box back then, six, seven, eight hundred bucks or something like that, and it was filled with garbage. So, yes, there is a place for CT scanning, no doubt. There's, there's a use case for it. However, what we've been seeing more and more of is not just figuring out what's in the box, but what's exactly in the box. There was a recent video that came out where you could see a Logo Man card and you could see which Logo Man card it was. Now, in this interview, they talked about, they made kind of a comparison to weighing packs or weighing boxes. I feel like this is a little bit of a stretch. Uh, I understand the whole idea of that it's still kind of really cheating to figure out kind of what's what. Oh, if we weigh the box, it's a little bit heavier, then maybe we can assess if it's got a big hit in it and so forth. But but the major difference is, is you have no idea what hit that is. I mean, it might be an autograph of a no-name player. That's different than being able to actually see exactly that, that is a, that's a LeBron James autograph as opposed to a Mitchell Robinson autograph that's inside that box. So clearly there's there's differences there. I understand kind of in the, you know, the 90s we've talked about this where you know guys could read packs and figure out okay, based on how the cards are laid out, the the collation of the packs, this person's on top, so I know there's a Michael Jordan card, there's a fourth card. I mean, look, there's a lot of detectives out there that have figured out ways to kind of get an angle when buying product. I mean, the big thing here too is is there's a lot of sealed product collectors, you know, people that are, or slash investors that are buying into this stuff. 
And the whole reason why that seal product is expensive and why people pay up for it is the mystery of what's in the box. If you eliminate the mystery, then it changes the entire game. Then it just boils down to, okay, all this, all that sealed wax that you're holding on to, just hope that it's got something good in it because eventually it's going to get scanned. And I don't know how you get around this. I mean, I, and I wonder too what sealed product people are doing. What's their reaction to this? Are they selling off? Are they just like, you know what? This is not that big of a deal. It'll blow over. People that are buying sealed products now, are they going to be way less apt to pay up for a box that hasn't been CT scanned? Isn't that kind of ironic? Wait, has it been scanned for good or has it been scanned for evil? In quotation marks. You know, scan for good would just be like, hey, we scanned it. I mean, this could be something where what is the, the authenticator, the BBCE or whatever the authenticator is, where they look at the box, they analyze it, and they decide whether or not that's a good box. I mean, a CT scan to be able to say like, okay, these are actually 86 FLIR cards in this box, but we're not telling you anything else. We're not looking to see what, what else is in here or, you know, 96 Chrome. I, I did see too in the interview, they said that vintage cards are more just cardboardy cards. The cardboard stuff is a lot tougher to, to read and look at. Whereas if a card is embossed, if it's glossy, it's easier to be able to see on the scan what is what. So maybe 86 FLIR is not a great example. Maybe 96 Tops Chrome, Kobe Refractors. Because, I mean, based on this, what I'm seeing is you could very easily see the, those expensive 90s inserts that everyone's looking for that are embossed. I mean, I was thinking about action-packed football cards going back to the early 90s. They could really see those suckers. Like four-dimensional, but... Oh, man... So yeah, but is it going to be, okay, the CT scanning company just scanned to make sure that it's the stuff that's in there, but they didn't look at all the other things. You know, I guess, where's that ethical line? And the CT scanning company has come out and basically said, hey, look, we're offering a service. We're not responsible for what you do with the information. I don't know. I would kind of feel better if the CT scanning company was like, hey, we'll confirm that what's in that box or case is actually what's supposed to be there, but we're not telling you a damn thing outside of that. We're not giving you any other information outside of it. But now the cat's out of the bag. You know, it's kind of like with AI. The cat's out of the bag. Now we just kind of hope like, I hope that we're not using AI for bad things, that we can use AI for, for good things. And to all the, all the people that are pro AI, you kind of hear like the, you know, we're gonna use this to help our workforce and we're gonna use this for this and that, whatever. Yeah, the bad part is this, of course, is Skynet and the robots run the world and we're all kind of like living underneath their, their rule. And that's the extreme, but it's kind of like, I mean, you look at the infancy of technology and how technology evolves over time. You know, AI, yeah, it's got some cool applications, but it also could be the end of the world. CT scanning, it's not going to be the end of our hobby, but it's going to have an impact for sure, an absolute huge impact. The manufacturers are going to respond to it, I'm certain of it. How are they gonna to respond to it? Are they gonna take it seriously? And I've talked about this going back when I first heard about this, the first video, I, my immediate thought was, Fanatics and Tops are going to sell direct to consumer. And, and they already do that some, but I just mean that they are going to, I think that the distribution moving forward is going to be very limited. That's what I think is gonna happen over time. It's not gonna maybe happen in the short run, but five, 10 years from now, I have a hard time believing that there's going to be allocation going out all over the place. Of course, that's going to affect hobby shops. It will affect breakers because who's going to have confidence going on to, you know, the streaming site, you know, hooking up with a breaker and hoping that it hasn't been scanned. It's just too much money. We're in too much money now. You know, if you're putting 20, you're throwing 20 bucks at it or something, fine. If you're $200 into a break or more and you're buying multiples, you know, and you're just kind of like, trust me, broing. There's so much trust me, bro, here in this hobby. And re especially recently, we've just seen the, forget it, trust nobody. You know, it's not trust me, bro. It's, you know, everyone hold on to your money. <laughs> hold on your money and be extremely picky who you're going to work with. But I could totally see, you know, Fanatics Tops treating this almost like, you know, we got to protect our brand, almost like, hey, this, you know, like, like you would against counterfeit goods. Hey, if it does not come directly from us, the manufacturer, then all bets are off. If it's if it's on the secondary market, assume the worst. And hopefully that's not the case, but just know that Tops Fanatics, it's not our problem. We sell direct. And once we sell it off to that first person, once it moves down the line, we have no idea 
what's going to happen with it. There are no guarantees. Maybe Fanatics Tops offers some sort of a guarantee, a non-tampering guarantee coming from the manufacturing company. That would be interesting. And then maybe they've got certain subsidiaries, maybe Fanatics Live. Hey, for the people that are on Fanatics Live, you can count. We, we will offer a guarantee that this stuff has not been tampered with. And anybody who screws that up on Fanatics Live gets the boot immediately. It's not like you get suspended. It's just you're, you're out and you lose all the allocation and you're out. Something's going to happen. We've seen a lot of gushy, you know, lovey, lovey hobby stuff from the Tops Fanatics. Michael Rubin's at the National. He's talking big. It's so exciting and all this. I have a feeling some tough love is coming. Some tough love is coming on the new product side from Ruben and Tops and those guys. They've just spent too much money. There's too much riding on it. They're not going to lose all of their momentum over this. I, I just feel it. I don't have any sort of inside information, but watch what happens here over the next few months with this stuff. All right, my friends, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I'll talk to you again later.